Well, we were absolutely thrilled to be able to invite the international biodiversity community to Kilkenny. Um, obviously, Ireland is a very small island, but we're all connected across the globe. And it's really nice to show off Ireland, but also to make us realise that we're part of a much wider, uh, a wider network that's trying to conserve life on Earth. The Global Biodiversity Information Facility, which is an international organisation to bring together information about the world's plants and animals. So biodiversity is so important because uh, we live in a world where we depend on the plants and the animals around us for all our food, uh, as well as for cultural value, for interest, and they bring us uh, the healthy natural systems in which we live, and yet so much of it is under threat. Recording the biodiversity around us all is so important because it helps us to understand the world in which we live and to understand how it's changing. And so much of it is changing so very fast uh, in all parts of the world, even the ones that seem most remote. There's new species arriving, there are species that are becoming rarer. We want to understand these things and we want to understand the implications for the long-term conservation of nature uh, and also for all of the impacts that these species have on our health and on the animals and plants that we, that we grow for food. It's important to track information about biodiversity to know about our resource, know what we have and to try and see how we can better conserve this and use it in a sustainable way that benefits our, our societies. GWIV is a global organisation dealing with biodiversity informatics. That means they distribute and make, make available information about biodiversity on a global scale. So they harvest data from all participant countries all over the globe and put them together and make them available for researchers, for the management, for the politicians, for the general public. The data that's mobilized through GBIF also provides uh, access to understanding a whole wealth of other system, uh, scientific questions, uh, alien invasive species, impacts of climate change, pa uh, paleobiology in all of its forms, understanding vectors of human disease and how biodiversity can uh, improve or uh, reduce the health of human communities. So all of these things, are, all of these kinds of research and scientific questions are the sorts of things that really rely on species data, open species data mm -hmm. from GBIF to be able to begin to answer those from a really basic, uh, basic point of view. Well, we need to track biodiversity. We need to know what's around us and to know what's around us we need data. So what we are trying to do with GBIF is to collect all this data from everybody in order to put a measure on biodiversity. So we are saying biodiversity is in decline. Well, we should know and we should prove because you know how policy works. We, we need to prove that biodiversity is in decline and we need to prove that biodiversity is actually helping us uh, to survive. So that's one of the reasons why we're gathering all this data. Other species which are like very important for us, we see that they are in decline. So as well as observation. So we know actually that this species is in decline. And we might like think of pollinators. The amount of bees uh, is, is really in a steep decline and we need pollinators. So if you want an apple in, in 100 years, we need the bees. We need all this information, uh, not only to save biodiversity, but also to save ourselves. I'm James Holder, and I'm here from New Zealand at the governing board meeting number 25 for GBIF. It's a great pleasure to be here, and certainly a lot of close relations between New Zealand and Ireland. I very much enjoy the culture and having a, having a fantastic time in Kilkenny. So I work with the Department of Conservation in New Zealand, and one of our roles is to measure the data, measure the status of biodiversity in New Zealand. Uh, we've got a number of ways we're doing that at the moment towards our outcomes framework. We've got an eight kilometre grid over the whole country. We're recording all of the plant and animal species within that grid to get some idea of what our status is. And that also gives us an idea when we do management actions about whether those actions are having an effect and whether that effect is good for our indigenous biodiversity and what it might be doing for some of the invasive alien species of which we've got a fair few in New Zealand. One of the things that we're really pleased to be able to do is publish all our data online. So our government has an open data initiative and GBIF provides a really useful way, a whole lot of framework for the small contribution that we make. GBIF gives us a huge valuable resource in order to publish that data. 
One of the things that we're trying to do is document what Ireland's biodiversity is, because if you don't know what you have, you can't manage it. So we have a lot of programmes where we get people out in the countryside documenting what they see and feeding the data back into us. And it's a really powerful tool that allows us to track changes in the countryside and actually tell the policy makers what's happening and that will inform policy to, to help change the countryside and actually give wildlife a bit of space and make it a better, cleaner environment for us to live in. I just want to say that uh, the real importance in GBIF comes in bringing this information on biodiversity together and making it available because it's what we need, what the human kind needs in order to make decisions on how to manage the globe's biodiversity in a long-term perspective. And the world's biodiversity is facing larger threats today than ever. I mean, we are aware that we are not likely to reach the 1.5 target, as IPCC states, meaning that the world's biodiversity will be in severe decline during the years to come. And we need to find ways to manage that. And information is the way that can help us do that. So everyone now has access to 1 billion data about species occurrence uh, owing to the GBIF uh, website. And this is why I'm very pleased to be part of the initiative. I think that we are really facing lots of threats to, to take care of biodiversity because we have lots of human activities that are degradating and threatening our planet. So we really need to have more information to take better decisions. We are very happy to be here in Ireland, uh, particularly in Ireland, because of the importance for Ireland, for the Irish uh, uh, biodiversity and the richness you have in regards to biodiversity. Well, it's great to be in Ireland. It's my first time and I'm quite impressed with how you organize uh, your uh, natural heritage actually here. Um, and I'm quite in, impressed with an uh, with, um, uh, Irish data centre here and glad that we uh, could come together with the Gbith uh, family to Ireland. I think it's important to, to share um, data about biodiversity because basically without that data we can't provide the necessary evidence where we would need to make um, informative decisions about biodiversity management, for example. My name is Tanya Abramsa and I have the honour to be the chair of the um, GBIF's governing board for, the, for this two years. This is my first year and so I chaired the meeting for the first time uh, in Ireland and I'm very honoured and very delighted to be here. What a lovely country. I think what really attracts me to what we do in GBIF is this idea that we want to create a a, a data bank of information for, we, we've got great ambitions to, for that information to be accessible to everybody, all the way from the farmer to the scientists and everybody in between, as well as politicians and decision makers about how do we manage this amazing natural asset, which is the biodiversity of this country, of this world. And so uh, some 20, 15, 20 years ago, this crazy notion that we would get together north and south, rich and poor countries, to create a depository that we could then tap and we could then use to say this is what's happening with biodiversity. It's been really wonderful to be here in Kilkenny uh, over the last few days. Uh, we've had the opportunity to meet with colleagues from all over the world who are challenged by exactly the same issues that we're trying to deal with. Uh, and there's been a wonderful sense of cooperation and partnering together. Uh, and it's been really exciting particularly to be here with the, uh, the National Biodiversity Data Centre hosting us uh, and to see the enthusiasm and the energy uh, and all the wonderful projects that they're involved in around pollinators and so many other things. Uh, this is an example of what we need to be seeing in communities all over the world. They often say you can only manage things if you can measure it. That's what we're trying to do. We're trying to measure it. And it will, this data will, should stand us in good stead to understand what's happening to, on the earth. 
And as we get more and more uh, data sets and more and more understanding of the vast array of species data, for example, on the globe, we will have a better understanding uh, on how to manage it. And so we strive all the time, both in the north and the more developed countries, as well as in the, in the less developed countries, to, be, uh, to have equal access to this data, to, to, for us all to be empowered. So it's a, it's a journey that we're on. In the end, we want an inclusive, empowered network that will be able to steer and steward this natural asset that we've got on the globe.